Before we move on, I just want to make sure you have a deep understanding of how we actually computed 600, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. 600, why is my pen malfunctioning? Let's see, 698. No, that's not the word. Oh boy, my, my, not only is my pen malfunctioning, my brain is as well. 686 minus 298. And I drew out the place values and everything last time. But I want to show you that you don't have to do that, but you can still have the exact same intuition. So the way you should do this type of problem, and in a few videos we're going to start doing this with four-digit numbers, and that's why I want to make sure you, ha you understand it properly with three-digit numbers, is you. And, you know, and the way I did it last time, I said, oh, well, you know, first I have to subtract in the ones place, and I have an eight here and a six here, so let me get some tens from the tens place, and then I, you know, this became. A, but what I want to show you is you can actually do all of the regrouping or all of the borrowing, depending on how you want to call it. Although I like to call it taking ahead of time rather than borrowing because you don't give it back. So how do we think about it? So in order to do any subtraction problem, you just have to make sure that the number on top is bigger than the number on the bottom. Right? So for example, in the hundreds place here, and we're not going to negative numbers yet, just yet. Well, you'll learn that in a couple of years, or if you're especially advanced, maybe even faster. But we see here that in the hundreds place, this number is lower than this number, so that's cool. But then when we go to the tens place, what happens here? This 9, which represents 90, that's bigger than this 8, which represents 80. Right? So how can we subtract 90 from 80? And you'll learn later that that'll give you a negative number and all of that. But we want to stay in positive numbers. So we have to have a, a number larger than 90 here. And we only have 80 here. We only have 8 tens. So what we can do is we have 600 right here. right? This 6 represents 600s. So let's take one of them. So we'll take, so we'll take one of the 600s. And we're left with just 500s. But now we have 100 to play with. And let's put those hundreds in the tens place. Well, a hundred is how many tens? A hundred is ten tens, right? So if we add a hundred to eighty, we get what? We get a hundred and eighty. But if we write that as tens, that's eighteen tens. So this becomes eighteen tens, right? Let me and and I really want you to understand. I don't want you to just do this mechanically. I really want you to understand what's going on here. When we took when we took this six and turned it into a five, we took one from the hundreds place. One from the hundreds place represents one hundred. So when you take that hundred and represent it in the tens place, it becomes ten tens, right? One hundred is ten tens. So we have eight tens and we add ten tens to it, so then you get eighteen tens. Right? That one let me, all I'm saying is that one hundred becomes 10 tens, right? 10 times 10 is 100. And we added those 10 tens to the 8 tens that we already had here. We got 18. So now the 5 is greater than the 2. 500 is greater than 200. 18 tens, or 180, is greater than 9 tens, or 90. But then here we have 6 is smaller than 8. So we're not done yet. So what can we do? How can we add more 1's here? Well, we could take a 10 from here. We could take a 10 from here and then, and then put it into the ones place. So let's take a 10 away. So we're going to take a 10 here. So we only have 17 10s left, right? Because this is the tens place. So 110 is equal to, right? You can almost use this as a $10 bill, right? We had 18 $10 bills, now we took one of those $10 bills and we have 17. And so that equals one uh, that equals 10 ones, right? A $10 bill is equal to 10 $1 bills. And so we took one 10 from here and then we could put it into the ones place. So we have 10 more ones, so then this becomes, well, we had 6, or you know, we could say $6, and now we're going to add 10 to it, so we're going to add 16. You may have learned you know, before that you're taking a 1 and you can put the 1 to the 8, but why is that really happening? Because you took a 1 from here, but that 1 is 100, which represents 10 ones. Uh, sorry, that 1 is 100, so it represents 10 tens. So 10 tens plus 8 tens was 18 tens. And then similarly, we took a 10 from here. And so we have 17 tens. And then, a, and then we took that 1 10, turned it into 10 ones, and added it to the 6. I'm probably confusing you, but hopefully you're getting the intuition.
So now we're in a situation where the 5 is greater than the 2, the 17 is greater than the 9, and the 16 is greater than the 8. And so we're ready to subtract. And we can do it in any direction we want to. We could start from the left and go to the right. We could start from the right and go to the left. Let's, I don't know, since it's a little unconventional, let's start from the left. What's 500 minus 200? What's 300, right? Because we're in the hundreds place. What's 17 tens minus 9 tens? So that's the same thing as 170 minus 90. Right? Well, that's 80, or 8 tens. Or you could say 17 minus 9 is 8. And then finally, what is 16 minus 8? Well, that's just 8. So there you have it. That was the problem we just did, and hopefully that clarified things a little bit. So let's move to the next problem. So problem number five, and on the same page, it's taken me 20 minutes just to stay on the same page. A man, an unnamed man, that's kind of suspicious. A man sold 230 balloons, balloons, at a carnival in the morning. That's kind of, that's kind of unimportant information. We don't have to know that it was at a carnival in the morning. That's just there to c confuse you. So I'm just going to write that a man sold 230 balloons. And I don't care where he sold it or what time he sold it. He, it then says he sold. He sold another 86 balloons in the evening. Once again, I don't care what well, I'll say. It. In, so this was in the morning, in the evening. The question they ask us is, how many balloons did he sell in all? How many did he sell in all? Well, if he sold 200, let's say in the morning, which I didn't write down, but let's let's say that this is, you know, a man sold 230 balloons in the morning. So that's that part of the statement. So we could represent it with these Singapore math bars that they like to do. So let's say that that's that has length of 230. And the units here are balloons. Maybe that should be another unit of length, the balloon. That's 230, and then it says he sold another 86 in the evening. He sold sold another 86 in the evening. So let's use one of these Singapore math bars. So he sold another 86. Maybe it looks something like that. So he sold another 86 in the evening. And they want to know how many did he sell in all. So how many did he sell in all? Let me pick a new color. How many did he sell in all? What's going to be the number that he sold in the morning? plus the number he sold in the evening. It's going to be this whole length. So it's essentially going to be the sum of 230 and 86. So 230 and 86 is the total number of balloons he sold. So 230 plus 86. 230 plus 86. That 8 should be right below the 3. So OK, let's add the 1's place. So 0 plus 6. So that's 6 1's, right? 0 1's plus 6 1's is 6 1's. So 3 10's plus 8 10's, right? Because we're in the 10's place. That equals 11 10's, right? But 11 10's, we can't write it. We can't write 11 right here in the 10's place. So what we do is, so you know, this 3, this 3 plus 8, that's the same thing as 30 plus 80, right? Because we're in the 10's place. And we know 30 plus 80, you know, that equals 11 tenths equals 110. But we can't write 100. We can't write 11 here. 11 is not a digit. So what we could do is we could take 100 of this, and turn it and 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 turn it into one. So this is you could view it as 100 plus 10, right? Or you could view it one in the hundreds place and a 10. So what we can do is let's just put the one 10 down here, and then. The hundreds place, and you might have learned this, is you know carry the one, put it up here, right? It kind of you know when I was learning math in elementary school, they would say, oh, three plus eight is eleven, so put the one down, carry the one. But essentially, what you're doing, you're saying thirty plus eighty is a hundred and ten, and a hundred and ten is one hundred and one ten. So we're putting the ten down here because that's the tens place, and then the hundred we're adding to the hundreds place. So that's what carrying the one really is, and I want you to have that intuition. Although, you know, if you just said carry the 1, it's really easy. 3 plus 8 is 11. Carry the 1. And now we have a 1 in the hundreds place. This is 100 plus a 200. That equals 300. 
So 316. That's how many balloons the unnamed man sold in all at the carnival. I will see you in the next video.